Okay, you join me again for a Dicka Data Sales uh, Training uh, Training Academy. Uh, my name is Robert Crane. Uh, you can find out more information from me basically on the slides that you see there. Um, again, contact me on the Twitter at Director CIA. Um, okay, so we have started the webinar and we are recording this, so uh, you can make that available to others once it is posted up. The slides will also be made available after the fact. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat, but remember that the best place is to send any queries to microsoft.sales at dickadata.com.au. Okay, so our weekly webinars continue on Wednesdays from 11 till 11.45. Uh, today we're going to have an introduction to uh, Azure. Then on the 19th, we're going to have an on-call presentation and enhanced presentation of Windows 10. So, so much has happened since the product has been launched a few weeks ago that um, there's been significant demand that people are wanting to see uh, more information about the product and things like Windows as a service in more detail. So we'll cover those off and we'll push the other um, webinars back a week. So after the Windows 10 Encore, we'll look at Office 365 security and compliance. And remember that uh, the first week of September is the Microsoft Partner Conference. And there as such will not be a webinar that week, but they will continue on in September, basically after the Partner Conference has completed. Okay, so what are we going to look at today? We're going to have a look at Azure. We're going to look at talk about licensing. We're going to give you a quick rundown of how to use it. Uh, one of the focus we're going to uh, go to is the virtual machine area. Um, Azure is a significant uh, amount of resources. So again, it's very difficult to focus on everything given the time constraints, but we're going to try and do something around virtual machines for you. Talk about the opportunities regarding Azure and as usual, our best practices and our takeaways. So one of the most common questions I hear uh, from end users and also resellers is exactly what is Azure? Okay, so Azure is a lot of things, but I think the best way to describe it is to think of it as your on-demand data center. So what that means is that it gives you the resources of a data center to, for example, create virtual machines, to do virtual networking, to run um, SQL as a service, to create websites. Uh, again, many people paid for racks in um, data centers and then you know spun up their own service and managed them or they purchased something from uh, large providers like Rackspace. Well, now you can use Azure as your own on-demand data center and that also applies to customers. So customers are needing more and more resources when it comes to IT. They're also needing more flexibility and agility uh, and that's where the on-demand component comes. So the easiest way to think about and describe Azure is as an on-demand data center. Now let's just look at some numbers, uh, why Azure is so important. Lots and lots of numbers here, but I think the most important one is in the top left here. Um, you need to appreciate that currently over 90,000 new customers of subscriptions per month uh, are being enabled when it comes to Azure. So that means there are 90,000 plus um, new clients being added to Azure every month. That's a huge amount and obviously growing um, at a significant clip as well. So again, all those numbers certainly indicate that Azure is a significant product for Microsoft, provides significant benefits and is a very major focus not only of Microsoft, but also for many clients uh, out there. So again, part of that means that as a reseller, generally you should be involved in the product, you should be looking at the product, you should be aware of the product so that you can offer it potentially to your clients. So how do we describe Azure? We go a little bit deeper here. So typically on the left-hand side, what we see is our package software. The stack that we have to maintain is the complete stack from the networking, the storage, the servers, the virtualization, all the way up to the application. But once we move um, our computing requirements into um, a data center, into something like Azure, we can take advantage of the fact that Microsoft can manage the virtualization, the servers and the storage for us. So basically that leaves us, if we want to do infrastructure as a service, simply managing the OS and all the way up to the application. So this means typically around you can run your own virtual machine. You can then make that available to clients. You can connect that to the on-premise equipment using site-to-site -site VPNs. But in this case, Microsoft's managing the virtualization layer. You, of course, in that instance, have to manage and maintain the operating system. You still have to patch that. You still have to patch the, the applications. All that sort of stuff still needs to be done by you. So again, very much like a Hyper-V 
environment on premise. The next step to the right gives us platform as a service. This is certainly the trend as to the direction with computing is going. What that means obviously is Microsoft now manages more of the services. So all you're left with managing and worrying about is the data and the application. So a good example of a platform as a service is Azure SQL or perhaps even websites. So what that means is all you have to do is basically pick what software you want to your website to run on, um, push a button, it then spins it up, it worries about um, the storage, it worries about redundancy, it worries about backups, all you need to do is manage the service. So again, you can certainly do infrastructure as a service, or as the trend is, you can take advantage of the platform as a service offerings that Azure does provide. On the very right, we have software as a service. Now that is typically something like the Office 365 product where Microsoft is managing that total product end to end. Not a lot you can generally configure apart from using things like PowerShell on that. Uh, again, they're managing the complete backend in their own data centers to do that. So what do we need to understand about Azure in its size? So the important thing to understand here is just to look at the numbers, look at the breadth. So Azure currently has 24 region, 24 regions, 19 of these online. So the amount of data centers that Microsoft has is more than Google and AWS put together. Now built on top of these data centers are your typical infrastructure service, your infrastructure um, very much like the on-premise, you'll see that we go from a compute through a storage, through networking. So virtual networks, uh, traffic manager, VPNs, all that sort of stuff you're familiar with is covered in infrastructure services. But again, it's much more than that. The platform as a service is by far the largest area of Azure and also the fastest growing. So in the platform as a service you'll find in there, you'll find icons for Azure, SQL, you'll find things like machine learning, you'll find all sorts of data analysis tools, you'll find content delivery networks, all that sort of stuff, again, is available um, with an Azure subscription. Obviously, you have the security and the management as well, so you've got things like Azure Active Directory, you've now got automation, which allows you to automate via PowerShell, You've got Key Vault, so again, you can keep your secure encryption keys. On the right, we've got our hybrid configuration, so we can, again, do things like backup, and we can import and export information into Azure, but also into things like Office 365, which are also built on top of Azure. So again, trying to keep it as simple as possible, think of all these services divided up into things like app services, data services and infrastructure services. So most resellers who come from an infrastructure background are going to have an interest in the infrastructure services. So what does that really mean? What that really means is, as I said, they can extend your customer's uh, infrastructure using the Microsoft data centers. So how do we do that? Basically what we do is we take advantage of the Azure uh, infrastructure services connected to our on-premise equipment using something like a site-to-site -site VPN. So many customers these days don't necessarily want to have more additional on-premise servers. They want to save power. They don't want to have the noise. Um, they don't want the ongoing costs or the maintenance. Uh, again, the way to do that is to look at extending their abilities using Azure and then connecting it back to their on-premise using a site-to-site -site VPN. And then maybe over time migrating more of that load into Azure to take advantage of all the abilities that it does offer. So the next question that most resellers have around Azure is actually how does it license? How can I get it or how can customers obtain it? So there are basically three major models. Three major models are starting with the left. You can pay as you go. So you can sign up with a credit card uh, and basically that credit card then is debited based on the amount that you are consuming. So remember, we're talking about an on-demand data center. So typically, things like storage, um, things like uh, virtual machine, how much virtual machine time is running, all that sort of stuff is billed as you need it. If you don't need it and you shut it down, then you don't pay for it. If you do use storage, then you'll be paying a few cents to access that. But again, it's all on demand. The next option in the middle is the open licensing program directly available to resellers. So what that means basically is, is that you purchase a number of prepaid tokens from uh, a vendor like us, a, a vendor like um, Dicker Data, and then you can then apply those keys, those credits against an Azure tenant to light up, to provide credits that the user can then run those down in on demand as they require. 
The third option, obviously, is for larger uh, organisations who can, again, meet the requirements of an enterprise agreement. So for most people, typically the pay-as-you-go scenario or the open licensing is typically the model they're going to address. So a little bit more detail on this. Again, enterprise agreements are, again, for very large, generally la much larger accounts. Now, the first one that's probably of most interest is the Microsoft Online Services Portal. Again, pay as you go, um, no upfront costs. You can cancel that at any time. There are also commitment plans. So again, if you are looking at spending $3,000 or more a month on Azure, then you can get commitment plans that will give you a discount based on the volume that you are using. Now, the option that we talk about and, again, focus on for many resellers is the open licensing. Again, low barrier of entry, easy for the reseller to order the credits and basically apply those to the uh, Azure account and maintain control of the billing for that tenant and also for that client. So, again, some of the key options, again, around the option, uh, around the open licensing is you basically buy a, a token which is the equivalent of a hundred dollars worth of a US dollars worth and put it into the portal. You can purchase as many of these credits, uh, many of these uh, tokens as you want and basically they are issued with a key. So again once those, uh, key, those keys can be stored and the only time that they start being used is basically when they're entered into the service okay so and as your credit as you see there expires 12 months from activation so again uh, once you put the key into an Azure tenant it then has to be consumed within a 12 month period and the way that it works obviously it consumes the oldest credits first and then moves on to the more recent ones okay and remember that there are no returns once the service has been activated in the portal so once the key has been activated in an Azure portal then that key obviously cannot be returned all right, so again, this is a great way for resellers to do it. Again, it's available right here in Australia for the Asia data centers, and it is a great way for uh, resellers to manage and control the licensing and also the billing for their clients when it comes to Azure. So again, remember, you've got the generally the pay with the credit card, and you've also got the open licensing ability. Now, how do we estimate the costs of what Azure is going to require? This can be a bit tricky at times because, again, because it's on demand, you don't quite know how much people need to consume month in and month out. So the very first way you can do that, if you're doing the, the no upfront cost, you're just paying for what you use, go and have a look at the Azure pricing calculator, and there's a bit of an idea of what it would look like. You can then go in and select a service, uh, indicate how many uh, different services that you want to use and it will give you an estimated pricing. Now the option that is most relevant for uh, resellers is to use the pricing calculator. Okay so what you can do basically is you will go into um, the site there aka.ms slash Azure VAR and then basically you can download this spreadsheet. So what I'll do quickly is I will just flick across to my desktop now and give you a quick idea of what that spreadsheet looks like and how to get it. So basically uh, when we go to that website what you'll see is uh, the Microsoft Azure open licensing page like you've got here. If you then scroll down the bottom you'll see here you want to view all the content so we select to view all the content and then what it will take us to on the next page uh, you will see here under sales tools so if you open sales tools and scroll down you'll find that the Microsoft Azure uh, open licensing calculator can then be downloaded once you log in as a partner now when I do that uh, if I open the spreadsheet what you'll see is that this is what the spreadsheet is here so again what I can do is basically go in here and uh, so I go yes so it's running a macro, select the macro run. Okay, so what I can do is select the region uh, that I want to use, and you'll see that we have Australia Pacific. So let's just select that. We can work out what currency that we want to use. So we want to use Australian dollars. How frequently do you want your customers to be billed? So let's say we want to bill them, you know, maybe every 12 months. Um, are you going to use Azure Backup? So if we select yes. Um, are we going to estimate price for Azure VMs? Yes, we're going to use them in production. Okay, Oop, and we get a script error, unfortunately. And then you'll see we get our in-depth calculator here. So what we can do in is we can go say, look, you know what, I want maybe one of these medium machines 
and I'm going to run it for the full hours on the month, so 744 hours a month. And then if I scroll down a bit further, let's say if I add maybe some more storage here, and then I scroll down and maybe add some more transfer. So let's add a gig of transfer. And what you'll see here is it gives me an estimated monthly price and a total over that 12 months. So obviously if I'm buying tokens for my client, then what I need to do is roughly go out and buy 41 tokens that can then be applied for that 12 months. So again, the way that you get to that calculator is to go to the website aka.ms slash Azure VAR and then download that um, spreadsheet. Have a play with it. Great way to estimate it. Remember, that's based on the open licensing um, amounts. So let me just quickly swap back to the slides. Okay, so the way that it works with Azure in Open is you get the customer to complete a verification process. They're basically the ones that it's their tenant. Then uh, again, you get them to uh, you or the reseller, you or the customer then activate that with the volume licensing key. You go into the management and then you can add the tokens in there. And then depending on how you renew it, whether you want to put more tokens in or they're going pay as you go, um, you can then support that. So again, that's all done through the portal, which you can make yourself an administrator of as well. So again, a couple of uh, suggestions here or guidance on how the renewal process is handled. I won't dwell on this because the slide deck will be made available to you after the fact. So that's how we license it. So how do we actually start using Azure? So the key um, scenarios for the SMB style market is around doing data backup. So you can back up from a workstation, you can back up from a server to uh, directly to Azure. Second option is to use something called site recovery. So if you're using Hyper-V on-premise, you can set up site recovery to basically copy that uh, virtual machine up on a regular basis to Azure and then either redeploy it, move it to another uh, location as a backup or um, work with it in the cloud. The third option is to actually spin up some virtual machine. So maybe you want to run an RDS server, maybe you want to run an SQL server or just a server, um, certainly can do that. And the fourth option generally where the focus is around is hosting websites. So most clients require some sort of um, commercial website. Many of those are based on something like WordPress. Uh, Azure allows you, for example, to uh, create your own hosting environment and you can spin up the WordPress site for a customer and uh, basically allow them to do that all under Azure. And if you want to get uh, more sophisticated, you can allow their developers, for example, to connect to the backend SQL database, which is on Azure, virtual machines, whatever. So again, that's the advantage of a single environment. Now, when you work with Azure, you end up, you basically start, you have the option for two consoles. We have the traditional console uh, there on the left, and we have the newer uh, portal on the right. So again, this is typically the way uh, that you can manage, that you can manage it from either way. You can also manage um, the uh, machine via something like PowerShell. So as you would expect, Azure supports the ability um, to work with uh, PowerShell. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen again. You'll see that this is my Azure tenant. What I have is these are all the items. So if I select the uh, web, uh, sorry, if I select the virtual machines, you'll see that I have a number of virtual machines. The one that is running here is the one I'm actually doing the demo on this Windows 10 machine. And I can basically select any of the mach these machines and run them up. Now what you'll notice is that down here is a huge range of options. But for example, if I go into networks, you'll see that I have created two networks here. So some of these uh, virtual machines sit on a virtual network that allow them to connect and talk together. So really the skills that you have around TCP, IP, DNS, all that sort of stuff still apply here. Now some of the other things, if we go into recovery services, you'll notice that I have a number of backup vaults. Into those backup vaults I'm actually uh, putting a certain amount of data from free maybe servers or workstations and again using the client um, that is available. So again you can create as many um, storage containers and you can target different sorts of backup information in there. So you could target, for example, virtual machines, uh, Azure virtual machines if you wanted to. You could target client machines. So again, you'll see over here that 
I have the ability to create backup jobs so I can actually use um, image based backup of uh, Azure Virtual Machines now. So a nice, easy, simple interface, plenty of options when you do enable an Azure tenant. Uh, and again, you can see HD Insight, you can see media services, all sort of stuff in there. Up the top, we get our credit status. So again, as a partner, you get around $100 or so credit a month. Uh, this will then run down, but this is where you would see the, the credit usage. And up here is basically my contact details. Now over here, we have the new portal. So again, very much the same as it was before. So if I wanted to create a new virtual machine, you'll see now that I get these uh, slides here that basically uh, slide out toast menus okay so I can go to the marketplace and here I can spin up a SharePoint server farm I could for example go into networking if I wanted to create a new virtual network um, even here I might want to create a new website so again you can use either of these two options to manage Azure or if you want you can uh, use something like PowerShell so the management is quite easy quite straightforward once you uh, get in there and start using it so again, just swap back to the slides. And unfortunately, it's jumped back to the beginning. So let me just fast forward a bit. Apologies for this. I don't know why it does this. Okay, so back to there. So we're using, okay, so there's the portal. So let's focus on Azure Virtual Machines. So basically when you run up a virtual machine in Azure, what you'll notice is it's inside its own cloud service. So a cloud service has a public IP address and a public DNS name, uh, has internet firewall, and basically is considered a load balancing boundary. So you can, again, put two virtual machines inside a cloud service and connect them up so that they are automatically load balanced. Outside the cloud service, you have storage. So you can have a number of uh, disks, for example, and you can attach and detach um, the storage. And that can be considered a separate item that can be added to a virtual machine inside a cloud service. So when you do run up a virtual machine, typically what you'll see is you will get an operating system uh, disk which is persistent and it's based on SATA technology. You will get a temporary storage disk, which is again SATA. The important thing to remember here is, is that if you close down the machine or you do reboot, that, temp that temporary storage will be removed, okay? So again, the important thing here to remember is that um, you don't use the D drive to store anything that's permanent. So typically you'll be using it for um, a page file and those sort of things. If you're using it as a um, DC, domain controller, you're probably gonna to want to add a data disk. Okay, so again, you'll create a new data disk, make it persistent, and again, it's based on SCSI technology. You can define the letter that you want and you would put the AD databases typically on this additional drive. Now, the reason you do that is if you ever have to migrate or you have to rebuild the machine, the actual data is on a separate disk, separate from the operating system. So again, this is some good um, uh, best practices to follow when it comes to building virtual machines on Azure. But out of the box, you'll get a C and a D drive typically, and then you can add your own data disks to do that. Now, a lot of people have a question about, can I bring my own server? Yes, you can. Basically, what you need to do is you create your uh, machine on premise and then you basically need to sys prep that to remove uh, any uniqueness in there you can then upload that VHD into Azure and then when you create a new machine you can do that based on um, the disk that you have uploaded so again quick uh, pop back to the desktop okay so what I'm going to do here is I will go into my virtual machines when that displays for you and I will show you quickly how to create a virtual machine. So what I need to do is I go to virtual machines on the left here, I then go new, I then go virtual machines already selected, I go from the gallery. So these are a number of pre-populated ISOs ready to go. So again, you'll see that I've got Windows Server, SharePoint, Ubuntu, I've got a lot of Linux options, but let's say I want to go Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1. So what I would do is select that and go next. I can then choose a release date. So you can see here, there are a number of different release dates. I can choose which version I want. Uh, basically then what I need to do is to 
give it a name that name has to be unique across Azure and it will check that for me I can make it a standard tier a basic tier then I select what size so how powerful do I want to make the machine okay obviously the more powerful the more cost it is okay so what I'm going to do is let me go to a d3 I'm going to uh, make this a login all right so concentrate on putting the password in the same twice looks good then I go next and in here I can choose whether to put in a new cloud service or I can put it into one that already exists you'll see that by default it um, gets the give, is given the name dot cloud app dot net now I can choose the region I want to put it in so what I'm going to do is I can either put it on my existing virtual networks which already live in a region but in this case I'm going to stick it in for example Australia East which is the Sydney data center I can choose whether to use a, a storage account I've already created or I can create a new one normally you just create a new one and down here you can see that the ports that are open and accessible are firstly RDP so that's typically how I would get to it and the PowerShell so then what I would do is I would then go through and create that that would then uh, create the machine spin it all up and then when it is actually up and running what I do is I simply select that and then go connect Okay, so that's the easy way to get all that sort of stuff working. So that's basically how you set up a virtual machine in Azure. Quite quick, quite easy, uh, and certainly recommend that you do have a look at doing that even as a, uh, a test environment. Okay, so let's just swap back to the uh, slides. And yes, there is a question that Southeast, the Southeast region is the Azure data center in Melbourne. Okay, so oh, one slide too early. Okay, so the opportunities are, don't forget that Azure AD comes with Office 365. So if you have Office 365 or your clients have Azure, uh, sorry, have Office 365, they already have Azure AD, just the base. We did cover that in a previous webinar. So that is something to build on and enable. Uh, I would certainly recommend that you use Azure for your own internal testing and demonstration. I certainly use it like the Windows 10 machine I have here. I have a number of machines that have, for example, Office 2013 or maybe Office 2016. Some of them are Windows 10, some of them are Windows servers, some of them are Windows 8. So again, I can use all these, spin these up for testing quickly and easily as I want them. When I'm finished with them, I just shut them down so it keeps the billing quite low. Remember that the problem with Azure is like Office 365, it's an extremely um, large product. There's, you can't do everything. My advice is just pick something simple. So maybe you start off with networking or maybe you start off with uh, virtual machines. And again, the recommendation is backup is generally the easiest thing to start with. Just set up an Azure backup, back up a desktop to Azure, then maybe do an Azure website, set up a WordPress blogging site or whatever that can be hosted on Azure. Don't try and boil the ocean. There's just so much in there. Um, it is very daunting, but again, just start simple. Just start in one of the components and build out from there. Again, you have a number of free credits with your partner account. My advice to you would be is look at backing up home workstation or workstations or home machines. I certainly do that for my family. I use Azure Backup to back up my relatives' machines, a eh, so I can get experience, but also so I know that those machines are backed up and they're done regularly. So again, a regular scheduled backup happens in the background. The good thing with Azure Backup is it's only backing up the deltas, so it's not backing up the whole uh, drive every time. It's basically doing a files and folders in that configuration, and it's only basically backing up the data. So initially, again, the first backup may take a while. The other option that Azure now provides in many locations is the ability to seed information either via direct upload or via shipping a disk to the Microsoft Data Center. So the ability to ship disks is now certainly available as well. But again, just have a play with Azure Backup. Keep it simple. Um, back up some files just makes life a lot easier and is a good toe in the water. My other advice specifically around Azure AD, Azure AD, as, we, as I mentioned, is part of Office 365. That means it is very, very important to not only Office 365, but Microsoft's future. Most people, most resellers are very familiar with AD on-premise, Active Directory, Domain Controllers, all that sort of stuff. Well, 
like everything else these days more and more of that functionality is migrating to the cloud that for identity is based on Azure AD this means that to provide those sort of identity services um, for Office 365 third-party apps SQL websites all that sort of stuff is going to come from Azure AD it is therefore very important that if you're an infrastructure person if you're an IT professional that you do have a look and understand what Azure AD involves, what it can do, and the different plans that are available. So Azure AD has a, fr a free offering, Office 365. It has a basic um, and it has a premium option. So the premium option gives you things like password right back to your on-premise server. It gives you additional security and control. Um, again, provides more functionality around the single sign-on portal. Importantly, again, as I highlight there, don't fall behind with this key technology. So again, Office 365, Azure AD, and now Windows 10, I think are becoming key technologies for all resellers to make sure that they are fully skilled up on because uh, they are so important to the environment going forward. So if you want to start using Azure today, um, you probably have uh, internal use rights already. So if you're on the MPN, if you're on Maps, um, if you're on MSDN, you're going to generally get at least $100 worth of Azure credits every single month. So you can use $100 worth of credits um, to run a backup, to run virtual machines, to uh, run anything you want, and that will then um, basically be consumed. Then at the beginning of the next month, you'll get another $100 worth of credit. Now, as you can see, I run a number of virtual machines, I run a number of virtual networks, and I, as yet, have not consumed that $100 worth of credit. The reason is, is that I start and shut the services down as needed. I generally don't run them um, full time in production. But again, as a partner, great opportunity to get in there, do some testing. Another good example is that if you wanted to set up um, directory synchronization Office 365, again, make create the AD up there in Azure, create a uh, DirSync server and then create the synchronization to Office 365. So again, if you haven't already seen, make sure that you log in to your uh, partner portal and you start using your Azure credits. You're basically getting $100 worth every month. Down there, I've got some Azure 101s around some Azure Backup, Virtual Machines, Active Directory, and websites. And again, remember, the uh, slides will be available at the end of the presentation. So some best practices. I said it and I'll say it again, use your free credits. You're throwing them away if you aren't. Uh, use Azure internally first, start using it yourself, spin it up, there'd be lots and lots of examples. So another example I can give you of where Azure makes a lot of sense for me is I have a dedicated Azure machine which I have configured to run PowerShell um, for Office 365. So this means it has all the right software, all the right configurations, always up to date, and has a synchronized copy of my scripts on that machine. This means that I can go to any client and log on to any machine with a browser, yes, including a Mac, and I can power up that Azure machine. I can then log into it using RDP, and I can then run my PowerShell scripts directly from that machine in Azure. That means that everything's in one place. I can get to the environment. It's always consistent, and I always know that it works. So again, there's a good example of how you can start using Azure internally. The second example I will give you is if you're doing Office 365 demos or you're doing any demos of any short sort, spin up a machine and make that your demo machine. Put on the software, set up the synchronization to OneDrive, put on demo files, um, have a link to all the websites that you want to use. So create a demo environment that maybe you or someone within your business can use consistently. Keep that up to date. So therefore, again, you can walk into any client without a machine, log on to their browser, fire up the Azure demo machine, give them a great demonstration of the technology, close it down, walk out the door. So again, another example of how you can start using Azure internally. Any of your networking infrastructure skills, TCP, IP, DNS, um, you know, virtualization, all that sort of stuff applies immediately in Azure. There's no difference here. It's the same technology. There are a bit different buttons and a few different ways of going about it, yes, but the core understanding of how TCP IP works, the routing, the VPN, um, site to site, all that sort of stuff is standard stuff. There is no reason to be afraid of going in and configuring this sort of stuff. It is just merely an extension of what you already know. 
And remember that we're going to look for more and more features of Azure to come into our free offering. So for example, the ability to customize the portal in Office 365 used to be a premium feature of Azure AD, has now been made free to Office 365. The mobile device management, again, was part of Azure Premium, has now become a free part of Office 365. So again, both of these products, as Azure scales up and adds more power, more options, many of the, the options that make sense for Office 365 will be automatically incorporated into that for free. And again, make sure that you utilize them. There's no additional cost. You can light them up for clients and again, start configuring those and building a complete service around them. And as I mentioned, the first step to using Azure is generally to extend the on-premise equipment. Okay, so what you want to do is you don't want to move everything to the cloud, even though the client probably wants to do that. Start with one thing, move the terminal server or move the one of the file servers or, or maybe move um, the DirSync server into the cloud. You don't have to do it all immediately. Start off and just extend what's there and grow it. Then you can do the stage migration over time. Again, it's not an all or nothing scenario. Okay, so my major takeaways are that um, Azure is a key product for Microsoft and as a partner, so it should be for you. Uh, it is going to become more and more relevant in more and more markets and it's going to be the required technology. If you're not using Azure and you're a Microsoft partner, you really need to start using it because it's so important to Microsoft's future. Again, if you're using Office 365, your clients are using it. We've covered this in a previous webinar. Make sure that you start looking at Azure AD that comes with Office 365, understanding identity, understanding what you can do for free with Azure AD and Office 365, like the customization of the portals, the web single sign-on uh, portal, all this sort of stuff you can do for free and maybe dip your toe into Azure. Okay, so beyond that, Azure, you can do things like if, you know, again, if you want to do more than just provide or fix computers, you can do websites, you can do uh, web design, you can do mobile apps, you can do SQL, you can do data analysis services, um, you can do so many things like this. So, for example, uh, Power BI, which comes with Office 365 for free, can connect to an Azure SQL database. So maybe a client's got a point of sale infrastructure and it can then upload that data into an Azure SQL database. Then you can use Power BI to pull that data out and start anal doing analysis on it and you could bundle that up as a service. Azure, again, still requires IT pro skills to implement, manage and maintain. Running up virtual servers, networking them together, running up websites, configuring backups, Using PowerShell is an IT pro skill. Even though the portal is available to customers to sign up with their own credit card, I'm yet to see a customer do this successfully themselves because they lack the IT pro skills that all resellers have and can take advantage of and can charge for. Those skills are valuable. They will become more and more valuable as we see the approach of the Internet of Things. More and more things need to connect to the Internet and talk to each other. That means they're going to need TCP IP connectivity. They're going to need Netmask. They're going to need DNS. And there isn't a great range of people who understand that as well as existing IT pros. So again, the future is very bright that the skills that you already have around networking and infrastructure will apply directly into this new environment. The other thing I would note here, however, is that the trend is to platform as a service. Infrastructure as a service still means I've got to maintain the operating system. I've got to patch it. I've got to update it. I've got to make sure it's up and running. Generally, what I want to do is outsource as much of that as I can to somebody like Microsoft. So rather than running up a virtual machine with uh, SQL installed on it, what I would do is basically um, use Azure SQL. So all I have to do is upload the data and then I manipulate SQL through a web interface, not through um, the standard SQL on the virtual machine. That means that I don't have to worry about patching SQL, updating it, um, re-indexing the databases, doing load balancing on SQL. That's all done for me via platform as a service. All right, so what we've got here is a number of resources. Again, uh, they will be made available to you um, after the completion of this via the slide deck. Uh, plenty of great information there. If you don't know, Microsoft Virtual Academy has a huge amount of training on Azure. The course that I pulled out, oh, the course that I focused on there, again, is the virtual machines and the Azure 
networking fundamentals, which I think is really worthwhile for you to work with. So again, as we always have, as we draw to the end of our conclusion, what I would ask you to do is just please take a moment and complete our poll just so that we know uh, where you're calling from, what the numbers are, so we can make sure that we do target the information to you appropriately. I will leave that slide up for a short amount of period. Remember, um, if you have any questions, you can contact me, but you can also contact uh, Dicker Data directly. And if you would like to see any specific things in these webinars or focused on something, please, by all means, uh, let either of us know because we are looking to build content that makes the most sense for each of the resellers. So again, just take a moment to uh, complete that. I'd really appreciate everybody uh, putting in the, the numbers there um, before we move on. So hopefully everybody's done that. So let me just go back to the slides. Once again, thank you very much for taking that moment to complete the um, poll there. As always, as we draw to an end, uh, don't forget that the contacts are here for your Dicker Data and the best general one is microsoft.sales at dickerdata.com.au. And again, we thank you for attending. Remember, we're running the webinars every Wednesday from 11 to 11.45, trying to squeeze in as much as we possibly can. Um, the 19th of August next week will be our Windows 10 Encore. Big demand for that. Again, if you want to see something specific, make sure that you contact us and let us know. The following week will be Office 365 Security and Compliance, which is a big requirement for a lot of people. A lot of people are asking about how to ensure their stuff is kept private, secure, how they can make sure they have visibility across all the information in their organization, how they can make sure the information is not leaking out. The 2nd of September, as I mentioned, is the Microsoft Partner Conference on the Gold Coast. If you are going, um, enjoy yourself, uh, but they won't. you won't have to worry about attending the webinar. Then on the 9th, when we go into, actually not August, is it? It will be in September. Um, we will be doing Power BI. So again, we're always up for suggestions as to the content and the information that you're after. As always, contact uh, microsoft.sales at dickerdata.com.au with all your queries. And if you do need to get in contact with me, you can do so via director at ciaops.com. And with that, I thank you very much for attending and I will stop the recording.